it comes to cooking, I need all the help that I can get. So the question is, is that $16 nonstick frying pan just as good as the one that cost $185? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which nonstick pan does the best job frying pancakes, eggs, and even a cheese mellow. Then we'll see which pan does the best job at heating food evenly. Finally, we'll see which coating is the most resistant to getting damaged. All the nonstick pans that we'll be testing have around a 10 inch diameter. At a price of only $16, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Blue Diamond. Blue Diamond claims that this frying pan is five times harder and 10 times more durable than traditional nonstick cookware. It's a diamond infused ceramic nonstick pan. They claim you can use metal utensils. Oven and broiler safe up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Works with all stovetops except for induction. Made in China. Weight can sometimes be an indicator of quality and the blue diamond weighs 664 grams. Let's go ahead and use a 1500 watt hot plate to test the nonstick pans. I'll set the hot plate to 400 watts for our first test making pancakes. I've pre-treated all the nonstick pans with a thin coating of vegetable oil per guidance in the instruction manuals. Most heat sources provide less than perfect heat distribution and many of the frying pans advertise having an even heat distribution. And the hottest part of the blue diamond is about 132 degrees hotter than the coolest part of the pan. I've mixed up a large enough batch of pancake mix to test all the frying pans. Once the pans are warmed up, I'll add very close to a half cup of pancake batter. The goal is to flip the pancake at a minute and 30 seconds. However, some of the pans lose a lot of heat when the pancake mix is added and the pancake will need to remain on the pan a little bit longer. The pancake did not stick to the pan and the hot spot on the pan caused a dark and almost burned area in the center of the pancake. Once again, the hot spot on the pan burned part of the pancake while other areas aren't nearly as cooked. And the pancake did stick slightly to the blue diamond pan. At a price of $17 is this granite stone diamond pro. The surface allows for use with metal utensils. They claim that this skillet is 10 times more durable, safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and designed for gas, electric, halogen, ceramic, and induction. The handle is designed to stay cool. It has a thick aluminum core clad between two layers of stainless steel. The granite stone is made in China, and it's 776 grams for the granite stone. Compared to the blue diamond, the granite stone is doing a much better job at distributing the heat. There's around a 60 degree delta between the coolest and hottest area of the pan. That's quite a bit better than the Blue Diamond's 130 degree spread. Compared to the Blue Diamond, the Granite Stone definitely did a much better job of cooking the pancake evenly. And the pancake did not stick to the Granite Stone. At a price of $25 is this Tramotina brand. It claims to be a professional aluminum nonstick restaurant frying pan. NSF certified commercial grade. It works with gas, electric, ceramic, and it's oven safe. It's designed for up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. The Tramontina is made in Brazil. And the Tramontina is by far the heaviest at 990 grams. And the Tramontina also performed well with just over 100 degree difference from the coolest to hottest part of the pan. And the Tramatina performed almost as well as a granite stone with a pretty even finish on the pancake. And the frying pan is just way too slick for the pancake to stick to the pan. Overall, a very nice looking pancake. At a price of $26 is this Sensart brand. Assembly is required, but it does come with a screwdriver. It has a Swiss nonstick coating. They say that the coating is safe and healthy. They claim that the bottom of the skillet is flat and thick, which helps distribute the heat evenly. Designed for all stovetops, including induction. A Sensart is made in China. And it's 948 grams for the Sensart. And the Sensart also performed well with only a 70 degree delta between the coolest and hottest area of the pan. Absolutely no sticking to the pan with the center of the pancake slightly darker than the outer perimeter. And the second flip of the pancake went very smoothly without any sticking to the pan. At a price of $30 is this carrot brand. They claim it heats up quickly and evenly. It has a large magnetized base and it provides a larger heating area. It distributes heat quickly and evenly resulting in no hot spots. It's supposed to heat up faster compared to traditional skillets. It works with gas, electric, ceramic, halogen, and induction. The carrot is made in China. And the carrot weighs 870 grams. And the carrot pan has a little bit more temperature spread than most of the previous brands at around 125 degrees. Not surprisingly, part of the pancake did cook quite a bit faster compared to the other part of the pancake. However, the pancake did not stick to the pan. Also at a price of $30, the same price as the carrot brand, is this OXO. They claim that it was the best in show on America's Test Kitchen. It has a three-layered German-engineered nonstick coating. They claim that their hard anodized body delivers excellent heat conduction and incredible scratch resistance. The OXO is oven safe up to 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Does not work with an induction stovetop. And it's 838 grams for the OXO. And the OXO moves into third place for hot cold temperature spread at 85 degrees. However, the center part of the pancake did come out a little bit darker than the outer area. No stickiness when flipping the pancake either time. At a price of $31 is this Cuisinart brand. It's metal utensil safe. 
is their Chef's Classic Non-Stick Hard Anodized Skillet. It's harder than stainless steel for durability and professional performance. Quantanium non-stick cooking surface is reinforced with titanium for lasting food release. Solid stainless steel riveted cool grip handle. The Cuisinart is made in China. And the Cuisinart weighs 890 grams. And the Cuisinart really struggled with a 144 degree temperature difference. And the pancake is a little more thoroughly cooked in the middle compared to the outer areas. However, the pancake did not stick to the Cuisinart. At a price of $35 is this green pan brand. Metal utensil safe. They claim that it's a healthy ceramic non-stick pan. It's free of PFAS, lead, and cadmium. It's designed to heat up quickly and evenly. Made in China. And it's 838 grams for the green pan. And the green pan performed just about the same as the Cuisinart at 148 degrees of temperature difference. Just like the Cuisinart, the green pan is a little darker in the middle compared to other areas of the pancake. And the green pan is just too slick for the pancake to stick. If you're known for being dangerous in the kitchen, you might consider this Ninja brand for a price of $50. Oven safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. During the manufacturing process, it's superheated at 30,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Plasma ceramic particles are fused to the surface of the pan, creating a super hard texture surface. The Ninja is made in China. And the Ninja is the heaviest yet at 1,036 grams. And the Ninja performed very well at only 70 degrees of temperature spread, the same as the Sensart. I'll let the Ninja cook the pancake a little closer to two minutes. And the Ninja did a very good job of cooking the pancake evenly without any visible hot spots. No issues with the pancake getting stuck to the pan. Also at a price of $50, the same price as the Ninja is this Anilon brand. Anilon claims that their pan will last 16 times as long as traditional nonstick pans. Engineered for fast, perfectly uniform heating. Twice as hard as stainless steel for maximum durability. It's oven safe up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The Anilon is made in Thailand. And the Anilon weighs 1,072 grams. And the Anilon has around 107 degree temperature spread which is about 30 to 40 degrees more than the top four brands. Just like the Ninja, I'll allow the Anilon to cook for closer to two minutes. And the pancake did not cook quite as evenly as some of the other brands. However, no issues with the pancake sticking to the pan. At a price of $86 is this Caraway brand. It's a non-stick, non-toxic, and eco-friendly pan. The claim is perfect for slide off the pan eggs and flipping pancakes. Oven safe up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Works effectively on induction, gas, and electric stovetops. Made in China. And it's 1,266 grams for the Caraway. And the Caraway is performing the best yet at only a 44 degree temperature spread from the coolest to warmest area of the pan. And I flipped the pancake at around a minute and 50 seconds. And the caraway also did a pretty good job of cooking the pancake evenly. No issues with the pancake sticking to the pan. At a price of around $90, is this Made In brand? Unlike the other pans, the Made In is a blue carbon steel frying pan. They claim it's like cast iron, but better. Handles heat up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the ultimate hybrid combining cast iron's heat retention and slick properties with stainless steel's heat control. The Made In brand skillet is made in France. And the Made In is by far the heaviest yet at 1408 grams. Before testing the Made In brand, I went ahead and conditioned the pan properly according to the manufacturer's instructions. And the carbon steel Made In brand really struggled in this test with a 268 degree temperature spread. Unfortunately, the huge temperature difference caused the pancake to burn pretty badly and to stick to the pan. At a price of $120 is this iMark brand. It's a non-stick cast iron skillet with stay cool handle. They claim that their non-stick pan is scratch proof and rust proof. Honeycomb non-stick technology. They claim you can fry eggs and other delicious food with ease. The iMark is designed in California but made in China. And it's 1,366 grams for the iMark. And there's about 101 degree temperature spread with the iMark. And the skillet performed quite a bit better than the carbon steel made skillet, but not quite as good as many of the other brands. However, the pancake did not stick to the skillet. And the most expensive skillet we'll be testing at a price of $185 is made by Hexclad. Stay cool handle, dishwasher, and oven safe. Induction ready and compatible with all cooktops. Patented hybrid tech utilizes tri-ply construction. It has aluminum between two layers of stainless steel. It's oven safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Hexclad is made in China. And the Hexclad weighs 1,130. Grams. And the X-Clad really struggled with almost 167 degree temperature spread from the coolest to hottest part of the skillet. And the pancake just did not cook as evenly as some of the other skillets. However, the pancake did not stick to the pan. Assessing how well the skillets performed with regard to nonstick properties is highly subjective. However, most of the pans received the highest possible rating of one. When it comes to even heat distribution, the Caraway did the best job with only a 44 degree temperature spread. Granite Stone also performed well at 60 degrees. Assessing performance regarding how evenly the pans cook the pancakes is highly subjective. And the Granite Stone Ninja and Caraway seem to do the best with the rating of 1.5 with 1 being a perfect score. The Tramotina and Sensart also performed very well with the rating of 2.
I've once again applied a light coating of vegetable oil on all the pans. So let's see how the pans perform frying some eggs. I'll allow the center of the pan to reach approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit before adding the egg. At the two minute mark, there was only a small amount of stickiness when lifting the egg off the blue diamond. After another minute of cooking the other side of the egg, the egg pretty much became glued to the blue diamond. Some of the frying pans are shaped like a bowl while others are flat and then some are actually higher in the center. And a granite stone seems to be a pretty slick pan and the egg white dispersed covering a large portion of the pan. When I flipped the egg, there wasn't any stickiness and the egg lifted very easily. After another minute of cooking the egg, the egg fell away from the pan and onto the plate with minimal effort. Compared to the granite stone, the egg white stayed together a lot better with the Tramontina. After two minutes of cooking, the egg lifted without sticking to the pan. After another minute, I was able to shake the egg loose from the pan. So a very good job by the Tramontina. Just like the granite stone, the egg stayed together pretty nicely with the Sensart. The egg lifted off the pan without any sticking at the two minute mark. After one more minute on the skillet, I wasn't able to shake the egg loose, but it did break away from the pan when I flipped the skillet over. And the egg mostly stayed together with the carrot pan, but the egg white drifted towards the side of the pan. The center of the pan is higher than the outer perimeter. The pan seems very slick and the egg lifted away freely at the two minute mark. It did take some effort, but I was able to shake the egg loose. So very good job by the carrot. Just like the carrot frying pan, the egg mostly stayed together in the middle of the pan with the OXO. However, the egg white did move towards the outer area of the pan. It also lifted away from the pan at the two minute mark with minimal stickiness. After I was finished with the egg, I wasn't able to shake the egg loose from the pan. However, the egg did become detached from the OXO pan when I flipped the skillet over. And the Cuisinart is definitely not a perfectly flat or bullshit shaped pan and the egg white really spread out covering a large area of the pan. I forgot to set the timer but fortunately the camera does have a timer and the egg lifted off the pan easily at around two minutes. After another minute of cooking, the egg became stuck to the Cuisinart pan. And the green pan has a bowl-like shape and the egg stayed together nicely with the green pan. It also lifted away from the pan very easily with very little sticking. After one more minute on the skillet, I wasn't able to shake the egg loose from the pan. Once I did remove the egg, the green pan held on to part of the egg. So the green pan is not quite as slick as some of the other pans. And the egg stayed together for the most part, but it did move towards the outer area of the Ninja. And the egg lifted away from the pan very easily at the two minute mark. After an extra minute on the skillet, I was able to easily shake the egg loose from the pan. Definitely a very slick frying pan. With the Anilon, the egg did spread out quite a bit since the center of the pan is a little taller than the outer perimeter. There wasn't much, if any, sticking to the pan at the two minute mark. After yet another minute, I was able to shake the egg loose from the pan very easily. Definitely a pretty slick pan. And the egg stayed together mostly with the caraway, but it did move away from the center of the pan just a little. And the egg lifted off the pan very easily after two minutes of cooking. Just like with the Anilon, a little back and forth action with the frying pan and the egg broke loose from the pan. And the egg moved away from the center of the pan with the made-in brand. And the made-in carbon steel pan really struggles with hot spots. Unfortunately, I had to end a test early and the egg became stuck pretty badly to the pan. And the egg really spread out with the iMark skillet. However, the egg lifted away from the pan easily at the two minute mark. After one more minute on the pan, the egg broke free from the iMark with a little back and forth shake. Definitely a pretty slick pan. And the hex clad pan is shaped like a bowl and has quite a bit of texture. And the egg stayed together very nicely. After after two minutes, the egg lifted off the pan very easily. After one more minute, I was able to shake the egg free from the hex clad, but it took quite a bit more effort compared to the eye mark. If you're in a hurry when you're cooking, thermal efficiency is a huge deal. So let's see which pan does the best job of heating up water in five minutes. And the hot plate is set at 1500 watts and it's already fully warmed up. To make sure that the water is at the same starting temperature, this cooler is holding five gallons of water. And the blue diamond pan is very thin and did a great job of transferring heat at 171 degrees after just five minutes. Since the pans have hot spots, I'm creating a water squirrel to equalize the temperature as much as possible. 151 degrees, so the granite stone is about 20 degrees cooler compared to the blue diamond. And the Tramontina is even less thermally efficient than the granite stone at 147.4 degrees. And the Sensart performed very close to the same as a Tramontina at 147 degrees. And the carrot really struggled with efficiency at only 138.9 degrees after five minutes. And the Oxo performed nearly the same as the Blue Diamond and barely moved in the first place at 171.8 degrees. And the Cuisinart is even more thermally efficient than the Oxo at 177.1 degrees, which is good enough to move into first place. And the green pan is even more efficient at boiling water than the Cuisinart 
in art at 182.6 degrees. And the Ninja trails the green pan by almost 40 degrees at 145.9 degrees after five minutes. And the Anilon performed almost the same as the green pan at 147 degrees. And the Caraway is very close to 40 degrees cooler than the Cuisinart at only 132.8 degrees. And the Made In brand claims that their pan heats up quickly, and this is indeed the case at 186.1 degrees, the best yet. And the iMark trails the leader by almost 26 degrees at 159.4. And the Hexclad also performed extremely well at 181.6 degrees. If it's all about efficiency, the Made In Skillet came out on top at 186.1 degrees. However, the Green Pan and the Hexclad also performed very well at over 180 degrees. While frying eggs can be very challenging, Cousin Eddie has a secret family recipe from his aunt Lethal Ethel that's even more challenging. All the pans have a very light coating of vegetable oil. The center of the blue diamond is close to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the perfect temperature. Unfortunately, the cheese became welded to the blue diamond, totally ruining a perfectly good slice of cheese and a marshmallow. And a granite stone pan is at 400 degrees and ready to attempt to make a cheese mellow. After one minute, the cheese did not become stuck to the granite stone. Another 40 seconds, and it's time to flip the cheese mellow. And a granite stone performed very well without the cheese becoming stuck to the pan. And the Tramontina has performed well throughout the showdown, and it's up to temperature. After a minute of frying, the cheese did not become stuck to the pan. And two more attempts, and the cheese mellow came out looking pretty good. And the Sensart performed well with frying eggs with a very small amount of stickiness. And the Sensart performed very well in this test. I, on the other hand, need to do a better job of flipping cheese mellows. Just like the Sensart, the carrot performed well for nonstick properties frying the egg. And the Sensart performed well once again, and it's just too slick to hold the cheese mellow in place while I position the spatula underneath. And I did make quite a mess of things. After a couple of more turnovers, this thing looks more like a marshmallow quesadilla. And the Oxo has a very small amount of stickiness with the eggs. And the Oxo held the cheese mellow in place just long enough for the spatula to slide into position. And this is the best looking cheese mellow yet, a great job by the Oxo. And the Cuisinart seemed to have a little more stickiness than some of the other brands with eggs. And the Cuisinart has just enough stickiness to hold the cheese mellow in place for the spatula. And it's two very good looking cheese mellows in a row and a great job by the Cuisinart. And the green pan did experience a small amount of stickiness when frying the egg. And the cheese became stuck just a little to the pan during the first turnover. A couple of more turns and there's some leftovers stuck to the green pan. And the Ninja has performed well throughout the showdown for pancakes and eggs. Once again, the Ninja did a great job with the cheese mellow. And this may be the best looking one yet. And the Anilon has proven to be another very slick skillet and performed well cooking eggs and pancakes. And I did a very poor job of turning over the cheese mellow, but the Anilon performed very well. And the Caraway takes a while to warm up, but it does the best job at distributing heat evenly. And the Caraway once again performed very well, no issues with stickiness. And the Carbon Steel Made In Skillet has struggled throughout the showdown compared to the nonstick pans. I did have to end the test early as the cheese became welded to the skillet. And the iMark has a lot more texture than most of the other skillets, but that hasn't really been an issue before now. And the cheese is not sticking to the eye mark. I'm just doing a lousy job and making a mess. And the hex clad also has quite a bit of texture, but that hasn't been an issue before now. Unfortunately, there was quite a bit of stickiness with the hex clad compared to most of the other frying pans. However, I am able to scrape away the cheese and it's not welded to the pan. While assessing performance is highly subjective, most of the skillets receive the best possible rating of one. Let's use the Mohs hardness test kit to assess scratch resistance. And the number three pick did cause minor scratches to the blue diamonds nonstick coating. And the number four pick made very deep scratches all the way down to the metal. And the granite stone is very hard and seems to be causing damage to the number three pick. And the granite stone is also performing well with the number four pick with minor scratches. And the number five pick is causing major damage so the granite stone seems to be tougher than the blue diamond. And the Tramontina performed well for nonstick properties but it's the softest nonstick pan yet. And the number three pick cut right down through the coating and down to the metal. Just like the Tramontina, the Sensart is very soft and the number three pick caused catastrophic damage. And just like the previous three brands, the number three pick cut all the way through the carrots coating. And the number three pick is barely causing harm to the Oxo. The number four pick is causing a little deeper scratches. And the number five pick is causing major damage. So the Oxo and Granite Stone are the toughest so far at a number five pick. And the number three pick did cause scratches to the Cuisinart. And the number four pick causes catastrophic damage to the pan. And the green pan is unfazed by the number three pick. And the number four pick is not making any progress at putting a hurting on the green pan. And the number five pick is beginning to cause harm to the green pan. And the number six pick finally caused catastrophic damage so the green pan is the toughest yet. And the ninja seems just as soft as the Tramontina, Sensart, and Carrot with major damage using the number three pick. And the Anilon is just as soft as the ninja getting destroyed by the number three pick. And the Caraway held up very well to the number three pick but the number 
number four pick did a lot of damage. And the eye mark held up very well with the number three pick, but the number four pick really cut deep into the coating. And the Hexclad might sound like a tough name, but the coating is buttery soft and experienced major damage with the number three pick. So the green pan has the toughest coating in the lineup, experiencing catastrophic damage with the number six pick. And the Granite Stone and Oxo also performed well, experiencing major damage with the number five pick. So which frying pan is the best? I've converted raw performance into an eighth UF grading scale to help make it easier to compare the frying pans for performance. If it's all about value, the Granite Stone earned A's in just about every category, including scratch resistance. The OXO also performed very well in most categories. However, the Granite Stone performed a little bit better for non-stick performance in frying the pancake evenly. The Caraway also performed fairly well. It had the least amount of temperature variation from one part of the pan to another, but it also takes the longest to warm up before use. The non-stick coating is also a little bit softer than the coating on the Granite Stone and OXO. In fairness to the Maiden pan, it's a carbon steel pan and not a non-stick pan. However, it is advertised as being like cast iron, but better. Cheese and marshmallows, what a tasty treat. All of the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.